Well, howdy, folks. It's me again, Randy Ray, the literate Texan, and I have another book review for you from here at Driftwood Ranch, and this one's a little change of pace from the last two. I've done a science fiction and an urban fantasy, and I am now going to review Arbitrary Stupid Goal by Tamara Shopson. And you can see how the name is spelled. I thought it was pronounced Tamara until I watched some YouTube videos, and it is pronounced tomorrow. So there's a booktube newbie tip for you. If you uh, do a little bit of preparation, you might pronounce some things correctly, which is tricky for me because let's face it, I'm just an old country boy from Northeast Texas who likes to read. Okay, so a little bit about the author and my experience with the author. I don't know much about Tamara Shopson other than she is an illustrator and author. This is not her only book. And she's also a graphic designer. And she has done book jackets designed for Jorge Luis Borges, which I may be mispronouncing. I didn't look up a video on him yet. But I guarantee you next time I do a video and mention his name, I'll know how to pronounce it correctly. Also book jackets for Charles Lindbergh and Vladimir Nabokov. So uh, she's got some clout. She lives in New York City. And I guess if you're just succeeding as a graphic designer in New York City, you're doing something right. She is also a cook at her family restaurant, Shopson's, which is central to both the memoir that I've read here and the story of how I came to this memoir. Because she is the daughter of Kenny Shopson, who is the subject of a documentary I watched probably about 10 years ago called I Like Killing Flies. And Kenny Shopson, uh, excuse the vocalized pause there, owned a restaurant in Greenwich Village in Manhattan, uh, kind of a, like a breakfast joint, but it was, it was notorious for having a huge number of items on the menu. You know, it looks like it could only seat about 15 people, 16 people at a time. But he had over 800 items on his menu. Uh, the, the guy was some kind of genius or savant when it came to cooking. There were over 200 different kinds of soups, all of which were made to order, which is really interesting to me because I cook a little bit. But when I make soup, it takes all day to just make one kind of soup. I can't imagine having 200 different kinds of soups that you could just make to order. So uh, I Like Killing Flies was the documentary that I saw. Thought it was fascinating. Thought he was a really interesting guy. Had interesting things to say. And then I found out he had a cookbook slash memoir available called Eat Me, The Food and Wisdom of Kenny Shopson, which I devoured. You see what I did there? And uh, wonderful book. Great recipes. Cooked out of it. Lots of really cool anecdotes and some homespun philosophy. Um... So, you know, I came to Arbitrary Stupid Goal and read it, and I feel like I finished a trilogy of sorts, although I don't think that was ever the intention, but that's what it feels like for me. So, let me tell you about the memoir. Most of it has to do with her reminiscences of her dad, but there's also a character named Willie, who's a sort of surrogate grandfather to her, and her experiences working at the restaurant Shopsons and being part of the community that grew up around the restaurant. And it was really well written, but, you know, I talked a little bit about her and her graphic design work, and this book has not just been written and published, it's designed. And if you look, you notice that even though this seems like a fairly thick book, the way it's set up, the pages are generally very short. And in my experience, when an author does this with a book where they control the, the number of words on the page and the number of paragraphs on the page and shorten them in some places and make them longer in other places, they're trying to control your experience of pacing, which is fine with me. Some people don't like that. Uh, the best example I've seen of that, or the, the most egregious example I've seen on, of that, depending on your point of view and whether or not you like it, 
is a book by Mark Danielewski called House of Leaves, where some of the pages you have to turn the book upside just to read them. It starts spiraling and stuff. So uh, anyway, I digress. So Arbitrary Stupid Goal uh, refers to a story that her dad told her when she was a little girl, and apparently he told a lot of customers. And I'm just going to read it for you here, okay? My father knew a family named Wolfowitz who wanted to go on vacation but didn't know where. It hit them. Take a two-week road trip, driving to as many towns, parks, and counties as they could that contained their last name. Wolf Point, Wolfville, Wolf Lake, etc., they read up and found things to do on the way to these wolf spots. A hotel in a railroad car, an alpine slide, a pretzel factory, etc. The wolf witches ended up seeing more than they planned. Lots of unexpected things popped up along the route. When they came back from the vacation, they felt really good. It was easily the best vacation of their lives, and they wondered why. My father says it was because the wolf witches stopped trying to accomplish anything. They just put a carrot in front of them and decided the carrot wasn't that important, but chasing it was. The story of the Wolf of Witch's vacation was told hundreds of times to hundreds of customers in the small restaurant that my mom and dad ran in Greenwich Village. Each time it was told, my dad would conclude that the vacation changed the Wolf of Witch's whole life. And this was how they were going to live from now on, chasing a very, very small carrot. And that's the arbitrary stupid goal that, uh, that the title comes from. So, there is another story that I thought was particularly illustrative of the community that hung out at his restaurant. Um, there was an armed robbery at the restaurant one morning, and not being a fool, he gave him all the cash in the register, opened for business, went about business. Then he got robbed again that afternoon at gunpoint. And Jeff Goldblum was in the restaurant at the time. And I'll just read the story. I wasn't alive during this robbery, but my oldest brother, Charlie, was. He, my parents, and a few customers are face down in the sawdust. Charlie stands up, goes over to the guy with the gun who's raiding the register. Are you a hand robber, Charlie asked the thief. Shut the F up, replies the thief. Charlie, get back here, my dad says. Charlie turns around and lies down in the sawdust. The thief leaves. Everything goes back to normal, minus some cash. Later that same day, Charlie is at a friend's. Tommy, the tax dispatcher, and Jeff Goldblum, the actor, are in the store. My dad is telling them about how Charlie mixed up armed robber with hand robber. A nice dressed guy comes in and pulls out a 45. There is almost no money in the register because the store was robbed in the morning. The guy's pissed and herds my mom, dad, Tommy, and Jeff Goldblum into the tiny bathroom in the back. Give me everything you got, the nice dressed man says, waving his gun. They all empty their pockets. The thief takes $15 from my mom, 40 off Tommy, 20 off my dad, and hands Jeff Goldblum back his tin, saying, you need this more than me. My parents went out and ate lobster that night. If ever anything upsetting happened, we ignored it and went out to eat. And I thought that was a lovely story. It's very illustrative of the kind of stuff you can expect from this book. But, I, you know, this book was so good, there were too many excerpts, and I just have to read them all that I thought were particularly good. This one is from Towards the End. And it's, my dad wasn't afraid of failure, but he was afraid of success. Some reasons for this. One, he doesn't deserve success and should not seek it. This goes way back to not being hugged as a child and all that. Two, success is overrated. A, the nobody goes there anymore, it's too popular issue. If a restaurant is packed, you have to wait to eat. Pretty soon the customers you love are replaced by people who heard you were great and want to find out if that's true or not. This is a group that contains a much higher percentage of smucks than naturally occurring customers. B, the buckets of gravy problem. 
Customer X broke the law and wrote a review of Shopson's. X was banned, though the review was positive. X raved about my dad's turkey dinner, saying it came with, quote, buckets of gravy. Served all year long, my dad's turkey dinner had five parts. One, turkey, dark lighter mixed. Two, stuffing, sausage, walnut, cornbread, or pecan. Three, cranberry sauce, homemade, heaven to this day. Four, potato, mashed, baked, or sweet. Five, gravy, made to order. After the review, every time my dad made a turkey dinner, he would worry about giving buckets of gravy. It bothered him so much, he took it off the menu. C, expectations grow to impossible heights, and the only direction to go is down. And three, inside we are monsters, and nothing brings that out faster than success. Four, bigger is not better, it is worse. The more money you make, the more you must spend. This is a fear of electronic cash registers, inventory tracking software, and expanded overhead. A fear of being more stressed out and becoming a manager rather than a producer. Shoot this whole list down, it doesn't matter. My dad doesn't do things for a reason. He does whatever feels right and makes reasons up later. That is his gift and his curse. Well, I thought this was a lovely book. Um, it's probably not for everybody. Uh, but if you've seen, well, certainly, if you've been to Shopson's, you'll probably have some interest in this. If you've seen I Like Killing Flies, or, or even seen Kenny Shopson's appearance on Conan O'Brien, where he teaches him how to make macaroni and cheese pancakes, or... If you've come across his cookbook, Eat Me, The Food and Wisdom of, of Kenny Shopson, then you're going to be interested in this. You know what? You might be interested in if you haven't done any of those things. You might just be a foodie, or you might just like interesting memoirs. It's a really fast read. It didn't take long to finish it all because, like I showed you, most of the pages aren't jam-packed with text. So, that's it for my Arbitrary Stupid Goal book review by Tamara Shopson. And I'll be back soon with more book-related content. Thanks again for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this.